yes, coffee beans grow the by the billions, the so they've got to find Poison those the extra so cups to fill. They've got an awful lot of coffee. Let's take a look at the process for making a cup of coffee. Here we have a vacuum pot, and although there are many ways to make coffee, this way lets us see what happens when we make our coffee. Normally this process takes 10 to 30 minutes, but sped up we can see that as the water is heated, it moves into the top section. This is because the pressure from the water vapor is increasing as the temperature is also increasing. The amount of pressure can be calculated by using Charles' Law. In Charles' Law, it's stated that as the temperature increases, so does the volume. The politician's daughter was accused of drinking water and was fined the great big $50 bill. Now that the water is in the upper half, we will let it cool to make the temperature go back down, allowing for the water to return to the bottom section, this time as coffee. So what did it do in that upper half? It extracted the chemicals from the ground by forming a solution and then making it release those chemicals that give it its distinctive flavor, along with the caffeine that gives coffee its desired effect. You've probably all heard of caffeine. But what is it really? At its heart, it's a multitude of carbon, hydrogen, nitrogen, and oxygen atoms. More than that though, it's a stimulant for a central nervous system. And because it's a stimulant, it wards off drowsiness and boosts alertness. However, along with quickening our minds, coffee also quickens our bowels. So due to those and other effects, caffeine is the most widely consumed psychoactive drug. And although it's addictive, caffeine is quickly removed from the body, its effects are short-lived, and it tends not to affect higher levels of thinking. The amount of caffeine in coffee can vary widely based on how it's prepared and where it comes from. Some of the highest amounts of caffeine are in cups of pre-processed drip coffee grounds. This is because they come from the robusta species of coffee, which is more easily cultivated. Most higher quality blends of coffee are from the Arabica species, which offers generally better taste. Once the coffee is harvested, it must be roasted and ground, and this process can greatly affect the amount of caffeine that can be extracted. If the coffee is roasted darkly and ground really fine, it can have 50% more caffeine than if it were lightly roasted and ground only course. I'm feeling mighty lonesome. How we choose to drink a cup of coffee can affect the amount of caffeine in it. A shot of espresso, even though more concentrated than all the other forms, contains two thirds the amount of caffeine as a cup of drip. Drip coffee is the most common method of coffee preparation. It works like a vacuum pot, but instead of moving all the heated water into the ground, it lets the heated water seep through the ground, thus dripping into the pot. I'll never know a Sunday in this weekday Talking to the shadows, one o'clock to four. And Lord, how slow the moments go when all I do is pour black coffee. Most often seen in coffee shops, espresso heats the water until it turns to steam and then pushes the water through the grounds, which are finely ground and packed together. This forces more caffeine to be brought out. However, the amount of coffee produced this way is often very little, and so, it's usually added to steamed milk. A man was born to go alone A woman's born to weep and fret And stay Lastly, a simple method for home brewing is the French press. This takes boiling water and lets it steep in the grounds of coffee, which are then filtered down to the bottom before drinking. I'm mooning all the morning, morning.
on and all the night And in between it's nicotine And not much heart to fight black coffee No matter how we drink it, coffee is still the most favorite way to start the day. Well, 